Hey, what's up, Integrity fam? Today, we're going to have a look at how to find cross-site scripting. And the demo application that Portswigger has prepared for us is actually taking care that certain tags are not allowed to be used. So let's have a look right now. What we are seeing over here is a blog-like application by Portswigger's web app academy. And we are going to enter a string called test. It doesn't really do much. Right now, we're going to do something else and try to use the B tag. That would print this line bold. So we're clicking on that and we're getting a line saying, hey, this tag is not allowed. So we are going back to the application. And what we usually do is we inspect the developer tools. And we go to the string test and see how it looks like in the dev tools. And if we look closely, we can add that as HTML and we see that it is just a string without our B tag because the B tag is not allowed. So what we can do is we can say, for example, insert payload here, and that is making it easier for us to spot the right request in Burp. We are using this and sending this to Intruder. And what we're doing next is we're getting rid of all the payload positions and we're going to say, look, where we say insert payload here, let's put down the brackets for HTML tags and then those two characters for specifying where our payload is going to be inserted. We're going to the cross scripting cheat sheet, copy the payloads to our clipboard and paste them into Burp's intruder. And then once we start the attack, we can see that there's a lot of requests going out. What we can do is we can sort the requests and the responses after the status code. And what we do see is a 200 status code on the initial request, but also on a payload called animate transform. So apparently that is an HTML tag that is allowed to be used. And if we fast forward the intruder attack, we do see some more additional 200 responses coming in. And we do, for example, see next to the animate transform, the image tag, the SVG tag, and the title tag. So let's have a quick look at the SVG tag. So that is basically a container that defines a coordinate system and viewport. And if we look down over here at the gray box, we can see that this is an example on how to specify an SVG tag in HTML, which creates those nice little circles down below. Now let's also have a look at the animate transform tag. So that is an element that animates a transformation attribute in a target element. And what we see in the example is it is used inside the SVG tag. And the whole thing that it is doing is it makes this little triangle down below here rotate. So having that knowledge, we can try to use the SVG tag. And if we look down at the developer tools, we actually see that this was inserted into the DOM. And we can also try to use that other tag that we just learned about, which is called animate transform. And using those two together, we can once again go back to developer tools and see that this has been added to the SVG tag. So next up, we need a way to exploit this. We can once again send this to Intruder, clear all the payloads, and add person 20 for a space character and then the positional markers. And we are going back to our cheat sheet and copy events. So HTML tags can have events. We can use them once again from the Portswicker cheat sheet and run our intruder attack to see if there is any event that is allowed to be used. And we can already see that the on begin event is allowed to be used. So we'll just go ahead and close this attack, continue it in the background. We don't need it anymore. And we go back to application. And now we say SVG is allowed animate transform is allowed. We're giving it a space character and now we say on begin. And 
after an event handler, you can use JavaScript. So right now we're just going to say alert string access as just for demonstration purposes. Once we have done that, we can click on the search button. And if we're lucky, we see that the attack worked and we have successfully popped an alert box in this demo application. So let's quickly reiterate what we were doing in this lesson. We were going to insert a tag into an input field and we tried to figure out if the tag was allowed to be used. It turned out that it was not allowed to be used. So we used a cheat sheet by Portswigger to try out every single HTML tag that exists. And we actually found one that was allowed to be used. Next, we needed an event handler. So we went back to our cheat sheet and tried all sorts of different events that can be used with various different HTML tags. And we found one that was actually not blacklisted by the application. Now that we had HTML tags and event handlers allowed to be used, we could put down JavaScript into the application. And this is one way how to search for cross-scripting vulnerabilities.